So you're looking to get into construction. Here is some of the trades that would allow you to start the fastest and it will eventually be coming to the best paid ones. Most of the trades in this specific moment are gonna be the most needed as ever. As we are losing some of the old school contractors or old school trades, we are not getting enough movement on the newer generations to actually wanna come out and work. So the prices as you get paid for a specific jobs are changing with it. Some trades used to get a lot more money 10 years ago than they do now, and some other trades are making a lot more money now than they used to ever make before. I will start with the three main ones, electricians. Electrical work across the United States is a very honest, hard, but at the same time rewarding job. I myself been in the electrical field for 20 years, and I can tell you this from experience. My first job as an electrician was just as an apprentice. Back in that time, the pay wasn't great. The work was as hard as the guy that was making the most money, but then eventually became rewarding. On all trades across the country, you can actually apply for the job with no experience, and they will tell you what you need to do after that. Either is go to a school to get into trades to you know what do you need to do to become licensed and all of these things so as you start with electrical it's going to become a little bit annoying i'm not going to lie and this is not just for electrical it's for most trades when you're an apprentice you clean you pick up you go get tools they'll teach you little stuff that they don't want to do your journeymen, your masters the owners of the company um, whoever is around you will use you as that you're going to think that it's unfair you're going to think that it's not right but what does what your bosses are trying to teach you is what are the materials like? How the job's supposed to look when you start and when you end? They're trying to make you learn how to use the product that you're actually going to the vent to get. You're gonna start with jack shed for tools. Those are gonna start growing as you start getting better at the trade and you start moving forward on it. In some states, you're gonna have to do schooling. You're gonna have to be a first year apprentice, second year, third year, fourth year journeyman. And all of these could take years to get to that point. You're gonna to have to qualify for the amount of hours. You're gonna to have to qualify for the work that you're actually doing. If you're choosing to go into an electrical or be called an electrician, as all trades, you will start as a low pay all the way to the 50, 60, $80 an hour if that's what you choose to follow with. But these are some of the things you will encounter. First, the actual work that you're gonna end up doing is if you are in new construction, they're gonna put you to set the panel. They're gonna have you box. They will say, throw the home runs. Why? Because that's the shit that people that are experienced don't like to do. As you start moving along, you will have to, in new construction, you will have to wire our fault circuits. You're gonna have to wire the kitchens, know the code for GFCIs, do the actual work in new construction. But if you are in the renovation and that's where you started your learning career is on renovations, you're gonna have to encounter the attics, crawl spaces. These are not fun places to be at. You will have insulation, rotors, all sorts of animals, finding their snake skins in the attics. It becomes normal, but that's where the big bucks are on the things that other people are not willing to do. Trades don't get paid a lot because they know a lot. They get paid a lot because it's not a lot of us. Everybody wants to get into the trade, but nobody can actually handle what the work is. Attics are not an easy space to be. You're easy from your arms. You start creating problems on your skin because you've been dealing with it for so long. You have to wear masks, wear your long sleeves, drink water, make sure you're prepared for the job that you're going to encounter. Running wire, dealing with inspectors, right? You wanna to have to deal with clients, you wanna to have to deal with your bosses, you wanna to have to deal with whoever is above you on the job. You wanna be on trenches, you wanna be running conduit, you wanna be working in the exterior, you wanna be working on panel boxes, stripping, burning things, breakers that are getting dark or little black, bus bars that are disappearing. Inspectors not showing up on time or electrical providers not cutting off the power. You're gonna get shocked. Just know you are. It is not a fact of if you're going to, it's just a matter of time. Get comfortable with all those things because they will happen. They might not happen when you start, but they will start happening eventually. And the pay will start reflecting on what is the quantity of work that you're doing. You can go all the way from 11 bucks an hour, if that's the minimum wage where you're at, all the way to 60 bucks an hour. Believe me, the one at 60 bucks an hour says he works a lot, he probably does more with his mind than he does with his hands. Why? Because he already learned to do everything you're about to learn. Payment reflects experience. Make sure you learn as much as you can. In most of the trades, included electrical, you will start at what they call 10% above the minimum wage. If the minimum wage in the state where you're at is 10 bucks, they might give you 10.50, 11, 11.50 to begin. As you start moving on in the company or in the experience, you're gonna start seeing 
that to reflect on your pay as well. As an apprentice could be making 10 and a half, $11, you have a journeyman that is making 35, 45, up to 55 bucks an hour in some states just to watch you work. You're gonna be jealous of that guy. It's normal, he makes more money and does less work. That's why he has you. As you start learning, your pay will reflect. You start at 10 and a half, $11, it'll move on to 15, it'll start getting to the 20s, you go from the 20s to a fourth year that is closer to the 30s. To get to be making within the 20s, you're gonna probably spend a year, year and a half in the trade that you chose, either it's electrical plumbing, HVAC, framing, because now they're paying you for your knowledge, the knowledge they help you get. Once you get into the 20s, things start getting a little harder. You start getting into the complicated shit. You start getting into working by yourself. You start working with different environments all by yourself and you're gonna have to come up with solutions for those problems. That's why the increase of the payment. Now you, are, you can actually be called an electrician. You can actually be called a plumber. You can be called an HVAC technician. You could be called certain things in the trade world because you actually know some shit. When you started, you didn't know nothing. A year and a half later, you're supposed to be pretty decent at what you started with, and then you start moving up the ladder at that point. For you to start making into 30 to 40 an hour, not only is your schooling gonna have to be right, your experience is gonna have to be right. You're gonna be a fourth year on either electrical plumbing, HVAC framing, whatever the case might be of what you're picking. You start getting to the point where you just watch people work. You do some of the work, you might not do all of it. People is underneath you. Now they have crews, you're the crew leader. You start taking more responsibilities that comes with that extra pay. Once you get the certification as a journeyman or that you could be called a journeyman, you're gonna have to put in the hours to actually get to become a master at something, a master electrician, master plumber, master HVAC, master carpenter. All of those not only come because you went to school, you burn your eyelashes and you learn from the book how to build a shelf. You actually gonna need to know how to build it. And that's why the big bucks come at that point. For a lot of people, when you are in the trades and you're starting, your complaint is going to be, well, the boss makes this much. Well, not only the boss put all the school in the time and the effort to learn all of these things, you don't even know what issues he's going through just to get you a fucking paycheck at the end of the week. In the trade world, either as electrician, plumber, HVAC, framer, welder, whatever you pick, the money is there but it comes with the necessity of the experience. We're losing all our Alzheimer's. People on their sixes, they don't wanna be working in the heat, they don't wanna be working in the cold no more, they're calling it quits. That's where you come into play. The more of those guys that we lose, more of the experience about some of the issues you're gonna encounter are there to resolve it. So start learning from these old timers because they know shit we don't know. Either you wanna work in new construction, which is normally the easiest one to get into because the codes are there, the people that are working on those environments are used to the new construction side. If you're gonna go into renovations, you wanna work with a little more old timers than you do on new construction. Why? Because you're fixing old people's shit. I don't care what trade you go to. Right now, what is needed is straight people getting into the field. If you are looking to get into HVAC, very rewarding career, very hardworking career. To start, as on any other trade, all you gotta do is get the job. Go apply, go ask them to give you the job. For you to start on HVAC, you can start raw. You can start just the way you are right now. No experience necessary. The reason why is because they will create that experience for you. In the state where I live, you don't need to be licensed to start becoming an HVAC. You're just an apprentice. As you start learning, they will start moving you up of the ladder, but you first had to get in there. What is required for you to become a master HVAC is going to become your responsibility to get there. It's not your employer's responsibility to want you to want more from it. Now, while you're on the job, you can expect certain things. One of it is that you're gonna work outside part of the time. You're gonna work on new homes. You're gonna work on the heat or the cold because you're still exposed to the weather. You're gonna have to enjoy the crawl spaces and you will have to enjoy the attics. Get used to it. It doesn't get any much better than that. One of the most common jobs in HVAC, if you are on the service department or renovation, will be repairs on AC units on top of the roof, on the side of a house, pretty much in the exterior. And you will have to figure out, take your time to figure out what the problem is for something. How do you make it into an attic? Well, most of the AC units that are in the ground will have a makeup per unit either in the attic or in a closet. Be prepared. Listen to your 
superiors about wearing maybe long sleeves when you go in the attic, wear a mask, bring a fan with you, don't forget your headlamp or your lamp to try to make it easier for you while you are in an environment like an attic. Here where I live, the attics could go up to 170 degrees. We try not to spend more than 30 minutes at a time in these spaces for dehydration and all these other issues. We prepare. We have fiberglass in the attics for the insulation. In some cases, it's like a paper just covering dust and chemicals. You never deal with an attic saying, it was the best attic I ever went to. They all suck, but you have to learn to crawl around them. You have to be able to learn from your superiors to encounter these issues and be prepared for what that entails. Like I said, if you're in a 160, 170 degree attic, if you have no water with you, you're causing yourself a problem. Be prepared to endure the things that nobody likes doing. And you do this in order to get paid the amount you wanna get paid. Like I always say, you're gonna make very little money because you have very little experience. As you move on on it, you make more money because you know more of the things that need to do and you're willing to go into the attic or that crawl space. Crawl spaces are humid. Most of the time it's freaking mud down there. It's spiders, scorpions, sometimes you find snakes, mice, rats, raccoons, you name it, you find them down there. You gotta be comfortable with that. That comes with experience. Normally they will send an apprentice into an, a crawl space or an attic just to bring you something not necessarily to do the work. As you start getting more experience, you'll get your own apprentice who's gonna bring you shit into the attic or the crawl space, but that's their beginner job against your job. That's why he makes 11 bucks an hour, that's why you make 25. If you're looking to get into plumbing, first of all, I don't know why, but I'm glad you are. We all need plumbers. In this trade, you're gonna encounter a lot more difficult things in my personal opinion from HVAC and electrical. You literally get to deal with people's shit. Um, if you are in new construction, you don't deal with most of this. You're doing with clean pipes, gluing things, drilling holes, getting covering wood from the houses. But if you are into the renovations or service department of this trade, you will be dealing with toilet changes, plugged up tubs full of hair. You'll be dealing with plugged up lines. You're gonna have to snake them and pick up all these things with your hands and gloves and be on your knees a lot. You know, everybody likes to tease the plumbers because of the plumber's cr crack. It's a reason why that. They spend a lot of times on their knees. I don't have good knees, so I can't be doing that trade too long. If this, if this is a trade that you choose, it's not any different than any other. The pay is reflect on experience. Learn as much as you can. Ask as many questions, even though your bosses might not like you asking the questions, this is not to benefit them. This is to benefit you. While you are in the crawl space, why do you need that tool? Why do you need this thing? Why do I bring this elbow? Why is this on a 45? Why is this on a 90? Ask the questions because everything they do as the experienced plumber makes sense when they explain it to you. Not everything they do is gonna make sense when you start, but as the money start to grow, that means your experience has as well. You go from being somebody's apprentice to having your own apprentice, to running your own crew, and to eventually running the entire job. As I put it on that order, that's how the money moved from 11, 12, 13 bucks an hour all the way to 40, 50 bucks an hour. It's based on experience. I personally, I don't know if you can tell, don't like plumbing. I don't like dealing with people's shit, so I just don't do it. And I hope I was able to help you to make your decision on which trade to go to, at least from these three. And understanding the pros and cons of each one of those trades on the work you will be performing. If you guys have any questions, please leave it on the comments and subscribe. I'll be posting a lot more informational videos. Hope to see you guys on the field.